Hi, this is Charles Kelly. How are you doing today? It's been quite a, a week, a momentous week actually, in, 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 in the last sort of seven days. So many things have happened uh, in, in terms of you know, government uh, stimulus, opening up businesses, um, and, and just generally trying to get the economy moving. Last weekend, we saw pubs starting to reopen on, on, on the Saturday and other businesses like hairdressers, but not beauty salons, nail bars and that sort of thing, which didn't make sense. And in fact, uh, a Conservative MP stood up in Parliament and her name escapes me, but she said it was a little bit sexist, that the it, it shows that the people running things are all men, that they didn't appreciate that, you know, uh, they might need a haircut, but a lot of uh, people need other things and, and they're not taking into account things like nails and beauty treatments and pedicures and that sort of thing. So, however... Uh, this week, uh, the Culture Secretary, Oliver Dowden, stood up and said that these businesses would start to be reopened soon. But in, in one case, they said, well, beauty salons can open up Monday. W why not this weekend? I, I, I can't see the, the, the point in the delay. Yes, they might need time to adapt to the new rules, but that's their problem. It's not the government's problem. So I, I can't see why they allow pubs to open on a, on a Saturday, which caused a bit of a rush, actually. Uh, but the, the beauty salons and other businesses, they, they leave it till Monday the 13th. Uh, so I'll, I'll go into those other things in a little bit more detail. But yeah, the UK economy is starting to open up slowly. It's like pulling teeth. You know, some businesses may not even be open up until the end of the month and this sort of thing. Uh, and, and this is all going to cost us, the, the taxpayer, they say government's financial stimulus or money printing, £300 billion this year, which is... Is, is crazy figures. You think, you know, we, we, they throw around these two billion for this and a billion for that and a, a couple of billion for schools and, you know, a billion pounds is, is a lot of money by anybody's standards. It's a thousand million pounds. You know, if you think a million pounds, you could buy a very, very nice house in most parts of the country. Well, you could buy a thousand of those if you're a billionaire. A thousand properties, a thousand million pound properties you could buy as a billionaire. And, you know, if you think there's not that many billionaires in the world, you know, I read a figure of five or six hundred billionaires, but that was years ago. Let's say there's a thousand billionaires in the whole world of, of what, ten billion people, you know. Uh, and yet there are, there are thousands, millions and millions of millionaires. Even in a place like India, there's more than a million millionaires, but not many billionaires. So a billion's a, a heck of a lot of money. And, and, you know, we're running into trillions almost now when, when you take into account the, the Americans and how they've spent and the governments here and... Uh, uh, and, and the amount of bond issues and the European Central Bank, it, it runs into you know, tens of trillions of, of pounds, dollars, euros that have been really printed and created just out of thin air, you know, just by pressing a few buttons, they just create this money. And, and that's what's going to be injected. It's unprecedented uh, stimulus to, to stave off the, the worst recession in 300 years and possibly even a depression if we're not careful and we don't get things back moving. Now, he's announced several things this week. One of them was the, 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 the package to keep jobs. And this is offering employers £1,000 to take workers back from furlough into, into employment and keep them there for the next few months. And they'll give them a £1,000 job retention bonus. This doesn't seem to have gone down too well. Uh, in fact, with John Lewis and Boots, it's gone down like a lead balloon. And they've just announced that they're going to sack over 5,000 workers and close down branches. They don't think £1,000 is enough to say keep a whole branch open to employ all those people for a, for a long period just to get a thousand pounds however for the for the workers they were planning to bring back into into work then, then thanks very much we'll have that thousand pound that's that's really nice that's a little windfall bonus for us uh, so I, I don't think it really makes sense I think the people who are going to bring the, the workers back are going to claim that that bonus the thousand pound bonus anyway um, and and for those who who are going to get rid of people, it's not going to make that much difference. That's the criticism of this, this scheme. And don't forget, there are 9 million people on job furlough at the moment. And, and if all of those claim this bonus, that's another 9 billion. Here, have another 9 billion. Hey, why, billion? Why not have 9 billion? Just take it, yes. We're not paying for it. The taxpayer is going to pay for it. And we're going to print the money and it'll be paid for in the next few years, maybe with tax rises, or maybe uh, we'll just let our grandchildren pay for it uh, over the years in, in interest. So I, I don't know. Uh, it, it, it is it's just crazy to me. Um, the other thing's been happening 
is the Hong Kong crisis is deepening as China tightens its grip and brings in new draconian laws. And the UK is offering British overseas passport holders the chance to come here. There are apparently three million of those. Um, if, you, if you take back, if, if you go back to when China uh, took back Hong Kong in, in the 90s, a lot of Hong Kong people wanted to come here then. And Britain had already changed the passport from a, uh, what they should have had really as a full British passport, but they didn't. They, they've got these uh, sort of slightly second class overseas passports, which don't have the same rights. And I think I think at the time they felt a bit snubbed. And a lot of them, those people went to uh, Canada, where they were welcomed with open arms in Australia. And they boosted the economy there. They brought money with them. Now, uh, we, we realise that we're saying, yes, come in, come in. Even Australia is saying, come here, come here. Now, Australia is a country, ironically, that has a very uh, different approach to refugees. They keep them on an island. Uh, I can't remember the name of the island, but it's, they don't let them land on, you know, you can't get on the mainland, mate. You're going to stay on this bloody island. And they keep them on the island and then eventually get rid of them or, or they just get so sick of it there that they just go home. They're kept in sort of internment camps on an island, which is ironic when you think of how Australia was modern day Australia was formed by Britain using it as a penal colony. Now Australia has its own offshore penal colony for, for refugees. But Hong Kong people, no, come in, bring your money, mate. Bring your bring your money, mate. We need some of it. So that that's an interesting thing. And and, and now Hong Kong has got an increase in COVID nineteen after being relatively free. Uh, that looks funny to me. But anyway, th there you go. We, we should watch this uh, with, with with interest. Obviously, Hong Kong belongs to China, so I guess they can do what they like, even though they're, they're, they're breaking an agreement. But, you know, hey, that, that's, that's China, isn't it? Now, the self-employed people in this country have only until Monday to apply for the government phase one grant, this self-employed grant. Now, this, is, this is very important because uh, the, the, the self-employed income support scheme, SEISS, uh, was originally launched in, in May and then extended and it covers 80% of your profits for three months. Now this is this will end on the 13th of July. There'll be a new scheme coming in August but th this will only be for 70% and you know many many self-employed in fact they, they reckon, reckon that this could be more than a million have not even applied. Um, some have applied and not got through but have a look at that. I'll put, I'll put a link up here to, to go for that. Um, and it's if you're eligible, your business has been adversely affected by COVID-19. Well, that's everybody really, isn't it? I mean, it's hardly anybody apart from maybe Jeff Bezos that hasn't been as adversely affected. Now, the scheme has been extended. If you're eligible for the second and final grant and your business has been adversely affected after the 14th of July, you'll be able to apply for this new grant. But the first one, you, you really need to, to get your skates on this weekend and apply for that. Uh, so, so self-employed, you've had, you've heard it here you, that you're on a warning now to try and apply for that if you haven't already done so. Now, other things have been happening this week. Travellers from dozens of uh, UK countries into the UK will no longer need to self-isolate. I won't go through the whole list here. Rules have been relaxed for for arrivals from more than seventy countries and British overseas territories. Beauty salons and open-air gyms will be allowed to reopen from next week. Open air gyms. Have you seen the weather this week? This is this is the UK. It's not LA. We don't go around on the beach, Muscle Beach. You know, this is the this is the UK. Who goes to open air gyms? I think what they mean is maybe the gym will set up the machines in the car park. But come on, you know, let's just let the gyms open. Um, and and then apparently they're bringing in uh, they're, they're imposing rules like you must have a hundred square foot per person in the gyms. I don't know. I think with gyms it's a bit different because. People are paying monthly memberships, whether they, they're there or not. So I suppose the gyms can afford to, to limit the amount of people who go in there. Um, I think unless the machines are really sprayed down after everyone's used them, it's, it's a bit nerve-wracking to go back into a gym with, with a lot of sweaty guys uh, coughing and spluttering everywhere. Um, I, I'm not so sure. But some of the beauty salons will be allowed to open. Um, there's the Eat Out to Help Out or Meal Deal Scheme, as it's been dubbed, this is where in August, if you go out and have a meal, you can get a 50% discount up to £10 per person. Uh, the big news on property is that stamp duty has been slashed. I'm sure you've heard this already. This means that it, it will not be charged uh, on the first 500000 That's a massive uh, boost to home buyers. It can save them you know, £10,000, £15,000 on, on a typical purchase in the southeast. Uh, it, it's great that, that it will stimulate the property market. 
uh, the, the s buyers of, of second properties, buy to let properties, investment properties will still have to pay the 3% surcharge, uh, although they won't pay the stamp duty on the first 500, but 500,000, but they'll still have to pay the 3% surcharge. Uh, so on a 500,000 pound property, what would what that be like? 15,000 pounds as opposed to what it was before, which is over 30,000 pounds. And I know I've paid that amount, which is an obscene amount of tax really for anybody to pay uh, to, to buy a property, which which means that effectively they're rowing their own boat. They're saying, look, we're not going to depend on the state. You know, we're not going to ask for a council flat or a housing association, build me a house. No, they're doing their own thing. And what happens? They're, they're, they're coshed down with a bit of tax. I, I think tax stamp duty should be uh, almost abolished and just, just a flat fee of a, a thousand pounds to, to, to deal with the paperwork. It's a ridiculous tax, uh, in my opinion. Now, uh, this is part of Rishi Sunak's and, and Boris Johnson's build, build, build program. Build, 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 build. We're going to build, we're going to build, 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 build program by Boris, who is also going to bring in more relaxed planning laws, uh, not, not immediately, but the, the stamp duty is the first of those. It, 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 took, it took effect immediately a few days ago, and it will run until the 31st of March, because they realise that the, the, the building industry, the housing industry, employs millions of people. I mean, directly, 750,000 people are employed in building. And, and it's traditionally that, even if you go back to the Great Depression, the way they got out of that was to build uh, you know, bridges and, and new, new projects and infrastructure. And, and that's a traditional way of getting out of these recessions, because as you build, you know, it stimulates the economy. It brings in more benefits to, to the economy. And I'd like to see them build new towns, new cities uh, on the scale of a Milton Keynes, uh, a Basildon, a Harlow, all built, incidentally, around stations. They were they were built on mainline stations, um, you know, perhaps an existing or created a new station, a, a Basildon or a Harlow, Gatwick, you know, Crawley near Gatwick, all built around that. Not the way we're doing it now, which is just to put up these towns and villages and garden villages in, in countryside, in areas where it's just going to create more traffic chaos and you know, it's hardly going to help with our carbon credits and, and reductions scheme. So let's, let's have a build program, building new cities on uh, existing railway tracks. So you might have a track uh, of, of railway running from Milton Keynes down to Luton or wherever, you know, and, and you can build on that, that track. Because, you know, if you, if you get on the, the, say, the Thameslink line and you go out past St Albans, there's all this open space there. You could easily fit a new station on, on you know, between stations, in other words, you know, between um, you know, Harpenden and, and Luton uh, and, and so on. You could build new stations and, and that would create a direct link into towns, into jobs, and, and those sort of cities would be very successful. I, I know that the Transport Secretary, Grant Shapps, talks about opening up uh, branch lines and opening up more rail lines. I'll be interested to see how that works. They were Many of those were closed down by the great Beecham, um, who, who you know, destroyed much of the rail link, railways in this country. And, and now they're, they're, they're sorely needed. So, so that's all been happening. Uh, the new plans and, and for, for the new planning rules that would hopefully liberalise planning a bit more and, and bring in more of the kind of uh, permitted development type of rights for, for more properties will be a good thing for property developers, small developers who can make money from you know, buy, refurbish and refinance type of deals. And, and the stamp duty will also help you sell on properties even if you you know you're not actually able to benefit from that that reduction completely as a, as a buyer but you, your, your buyers will be able to uh, benefit from that and that that that, that will be I think good news uh, so we'll, we'll see more of that and hopefully that will stimulate the market and you know incidentally there are lots of ways of buying property you don't necessarily have to just do buy to let you know, buy to let is just one uh, blunt instrument a, a way of getting into to property there are so many different things you can do in property small refurbishments um, you, you can you can buy properties without necessarily using your own money or obtaining mortgages using lots of techniques options jvs uh, joint venture arrangements um, delayed purchases delayed completions all sorts of things assisted selling assisted sales there are lots of ways of buying property without actually uh, physically buying it and then going through this stamp duty uh, hump and and then that way you you can uh, transact things smoothly without 
going through stamp duty. So there are lots of ways of doing things and you, and you need to learn about these. So if you're interested in that, drop me a line. There's lots of courses available. Um, now, I, I said yesterday that opportunity is everywhere. And this country has a lot of opportunities and it, not just in buying properties, for instance, but you've got to remember that, that the UK is a land where you can easily set up a business. You can you can order a limited company online, a corporation, you know, for, for £50, you can be up and running uh, with, with a business, register it with the tax man online. It's got a fair tax system. It has a good rule of law and, and just a, a good system to set up a business. That's why so many businesses come here to set up, even from European countries, because the system is, is much easier to set up a business than it, it is in, say, a country like Italy or Germany. It's so much better here. Uh, and and that's why I think we, we are a nation of entrepreneurs here and, and small businesses. Uh, they used to call us, Napoleon called us a nation of shopkeepers. Well, we are, we are in fact a nation of entrepreneurs and opportunities everywhere. But you have to act. You have to get off your backside and do something and act. So if there's opportunities to develop properties, you need to get into that and, and do something about it. Even if you're watching The Secret and it's saying, you know, law of attraction, um, the money will come. No, it doesn't come like that. It, you have to act as well. Uh, so, that, you know, I, I, I think that there's also other opportunities in training now. That The government are also encouraging companies to, 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 to run more training schemes and, and paying them to take on young people, which is another good thing. I used to run a training company. We, we, we used to run NVQ training, vocational training and uh, apprenticeships. And, and it was hard sometimes. It was hard to even give them away. Even though they were free to the to the user, free to the employer, sometimes oh, I don't know, you know, and getting people to actually turn up for a course was so difficult. You, you'd you'd arrange it all, and then the young person wouldn't bother to turn up, or they turn up for a few days, and then they give up. So well, it's too far. I can't do this anymore. You know, I I, I don't like this kind of job. I, I want to go and find myself. Well, you know, this is the UK. It's not Tibet. You know, find yourself. Get off your ass and do some work. Then you'll you'll probably find out what you're really made of. Yeah, it's all right saying, yeah, I want to be a film director in Hollywood. But until you, you can get there, you need to earn some money. You need to do some work. So I think, you know, for people here who sometimes say, there's no opportunity, there's no opportunity. Of course there's opportunity. There's loads of opportunities here. That's why people are trying to get here on the back of a lorry or by any means possible or crossing the channel on a raft to get just to get here because they know there's opportunities here. Now, I know what people are saying. Well, they're only coming here for benefits. No, they're coming here to work. They're coming here to build a better life for themselves in the main. I, I, I really do believe that because I've seen it myself. I've employed a lot of migrants. I help people to come here as students. I help people to come here and get work permits as nurses and care workers. And I saw how they worked hard and got on and they always grabbed every course that was going. So there is opportunity here. And, and I think you should do other things that are happening. They've announced a, a five thousand pound energy saving home improvement scheme to insulate your home or £10,000 for the lower paid um, and that would be a good thing to get perhaps 100,000 people back to work and, and save on energy spend as well. So lots of things, I mean, there were so many announcements this week you need to really go over them and look at them and all I can say is um, there are opportunities here but I think there's going to be massive changes in the next few years and we're already seeing that uh, the, the number of workers are being cut uh, by, by large companies that they're, they're looking at more automation they're looking at less office space more people working from home and and more online shopping i i think it's inevitable that uh, some of the big stores like john lewis is a massive store they're closing down one of their stores not some provincial town they're closing down birmingham which, which is right in the heart of birmingham the big bullring the new bullring shopping it was an amazing place birmingham and, and you know that that modern shopping development i can't believe they're closing down one of their flagship shops in Birmingham that's one of the shops that's going to go uh, so there's going to be massive changes and unfortunately many of us uh, might, might find their job has been phased out now's the time to learn how to to, to to do things in a different way to learn new skills so that you you can survive and thrive in the in this crisis which is not going to end next month it's going to go on for much longer and the government seem hell-bent on keeping people from really getting back to work uh, but you can learn from, I mean, there's lots of seminars, but there's one coming up in about a week's time, uh, 19th of July, e-commerce, cash flow, uh, how to build a profitable e-commerce business in less than 90 days. Now, you don't even have to get off your ass for that. You can do that from home. You can watch this, the webinar from home, and I'm sure it will be of interest. There's a link up here. Uh, just, just register for it, then they'll send you a reminder. 
But I think that's one of the ways you can maybe build a little business on the side initially, but it could become your main business if, if you work at it and, and actually sort of take action on that. But th there are lots of opportunities, as I said, and that's one of them. Lots of opportunities are coming up in property, learning how to trade online, or maybe changing your existing work, your existing business to a, uh, an online model. I think lo lots of shops will have to do that because, you know, the idea of paying, uh, you know, 30,000 a year rent and rates and all that sort of thing for a shop are you know, not disappearing, but it's going to be very, very tough for people to run a business in that way. Whereas an e-commerce business, you can run it from home. All you're paying for is a small fee to someone like Spotify or Amazon. And it's a fraction of the cost of running a physical business. And you haven't got all the staffing costs as well. And all the fulfillment is done for you by companies like Amazon. So have a look at that at the bottom of this page. And I hope you all have a great weekend. Uh, the weather's going to be nicer here. I expect people might be hitting the beauty spots, but, but so what? You know, the people at the, the coast don't own these beauty spots. They've got to make room for people to go and enjoy themselves. And if you're going on holiday, do make sure you check your insurance. Make sure you're covered in case there are any problems for, for COVID-19 or for, for delays. And I, I do feel for those people that are still waiting for their refunds from companies like EasyJet and Ryanair. Um, th there was a case recently of EasyJet cancelling an outbound flight and, and they're not offering them a refund, you know, because they said, no, you can still use the, the inbound flight. Well, you know, if they can't get to Spain on the outbound flight because that's been cancelled, how are they going to take advantage of the inbound flight? You know, EasyJet should have just sent the money back. No, they're having to go, go for a claim to get their money back. It, it's ridiculous. Anyway, if, you're, if you are going on holiday, stay safe, check your insurance. And uh, for the self-employed, final reminder, do, do apply for that grant scheme. And I'll put a link up here uh, before Monday, because otherwise there's going to be a, a, a lesser grant coming out later on. So thanks for listening. Have a great day and weekend. Bye for now.